We've learned that asymmetric information can cause the private market to fail to maximize social welfare. If everyone has full information, the private market can work great. But if one person in a transaction can hide important information, then things can fall apart quickly. For this reason, we think there may be a role for the government in providing social insurance, like medical insurance. In medical insurance, you make a payment every month, and if you ever get sick, your costs get covered. This is useful because medical costs can be astronomical. Getting really sick can easily cost $100,000 or more. What can you do about this? Well, if you're Bill Gates, it's not a big deal. Just put that much money aside in case you get sick. But most people don't have that kind of money. So instead, they pay for insurance. They pay maybe $400 per month. That's a lot of money, but it means you'll never get hit with a $100,000 bill that will send you into bankruptcy. But as we mentioned in this lecture, information asymmetry is a big problem in this market. Let's say you're healthy. Why spend $400 per month if you don't think you'll get sick? And let's say I'm sick. Then I'll definitely get health insurance ASAP. So this is a problem for insurance companies because they only end up insuring sick people and they lose money. What can the government do to try to address this market failure? The first option is to directly provide the insurance. If the government just provides the insurance for free, then there's no worry about a market failure since everybody gets it for free. Then you don't have only sick people getting insurance. This is the traditional social insurance model in the US. For example, if you lose your job, you get unemployment insurance which gives you payments until you find a new job up to a time limit. If you get seriously disabled and can't work anymore, you get disability insurance, which provides you an income to support you without working. And if you retire and don't earn any more income, you get Social Security, which provides a payment from the point of retirement until the point of death. And the larger social insurance programs are for health care. There's Medicare, which is a government-provided health insurance program for everyone over age 65 in the U.S. And there's Medicaid, which is government-provided health insurance for those who live below or near the poverty line. What else can the government do? It can subsidize the purchase of insurance. You can sort of think of informational asymmetry as a problem with a positive externality. If I get the healthy guy to buy insurance, then it allows the market to exist. Because the healthy guy buys insurance and doesn't end up needing to use it much, that allows the insurance companies to spend the necessary money on those who get sick. So as with any positive externality, we can also address it through a corrective subsidy. If we give folks money to buy insurance, then we can get healthy people to participate, even if it isn't a good deal for them. In the US, we do this through a tax break for those who get health insurance at work. If MIT gives me $10,000 for being a good economist, I have to pay tax on that, about $3,000 of tax. But if MIT spends $10,000 to give me health insurance, I'm not taxed. This exclusion of health insurance from taxation costs the US government $250 billion each year. This is basically a subsidy we're giving to folks to make sure that the healthy buy insurance. Now what's the last option? The government can mandate the purchase of health insurance. As we said earlier, the problem we have is that healthy people won't buy health insurance. If only sick people get insurance, the insurance company will lose money. But what if the government says that every healthy person has to buy health insurance or else pay a fine? If I'm an insurance company and I know that now everyone has to buy insurance, then when someone walks into my office looking for insurance, I'm not worried that he's particularly sick, so I'm willing to sell to him. A long-standing example of such a mandate in the U.S. is workers' compensation insurance. This is a program that provides you cash compensation and coverage for medical expenses if you have to miss work due to an injury on the job. Rather than the government providing the insurance or subsidizing individuals to buy it, there's a law that says that all employers must offer this insurance to their employees. No ifs, ands, or buts. As a result, all employees in the U.S. have insurance against getting hurt on the job. It's not through a government program or a subsidy, but through private insurance mandated by the government. To conclude this application, let's turn to the example of the Affordable Care Act, or the ACA, a major health care reform that was passed in 2010 and took effect in 2014. This law was aimed at the 50 million Americans who did not have health insurance. It tried to address this problem in all three of these ways. First, it increased the government provision of insurance. It did so by greatly expanding the Medicaid program, 
offering government-provided insurance to a much larger set of individuals than in the past. More than 10 million folks have joined the Medicaid program due to the Affordable Care Act. Second, it subsidized the purchase of insurance. The ACA set up new tax credits for those who buy health insurance on their own. For individuals who are low income and buy private insurance, the government pays a large share of the cost of the plan. In 2015, 9 million people were taking advantage of these new subsidies. Finally, the ACA includes a mandate that individuals must buy health insurance. Under this mandate, individuals in the U.S. must buy health insurance or face a steep fine. As a result of this combination of policies, about 20 million Americans have gained health insurance coverage. And all this became possible because economists have spent time figuring out how information asymmetry works and how to fight it. All this is to say, the stuff you learn in introductory economics ends up driving the most important policy debates in the news.